Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis, thank you all for stopping by to watch. Are we looking at a perfect storm, a perfect storm of all the stuff that's happening around us today? There's a couple other things that are going on that because of between the hurricane and the huge, huge debacle in Afghanistan, most people have not paid attention to. And that's the rent moratorium that's ended and the unemployment benefits that are coming to an end. That and several other things kind of makes me think that a lot of people not getting the money that they've been used to for the last 18 months and they're gonna get evicted from their home. Uh, we could be looking at, at some serious times ahead in a perfect storm. And I wanna get into that here in just a minute. I, I, first off, I wanna talk about, uh, well, I have prepping tips today, or a prepping tip. Um, your first aid kits, which are very important, you should all have them, you should all have a good one. Don't just go to Walmart and buy the $15 ones or whatever. Um, I've made videos on first aid. There's other channels out there that make great videos on first aid. Make sure you have a, a very good one. But in the end, most first aid kits are focused on triaging the patient, getting them stable so that you can get them to a hospital, get them to the emergency room. Well, what happens when the hospital doesn't exist? What happens when there's no ER to take them to? Or what happens when it's too dangerous to take them to an ER? Maybe there's too many regulations and restrictions. It's just not possible to take them to an ER. What are we gonna do when that happens? Are you prepared for that? So uh, I wanna show just one item, but it kinda, I don't know, kinda is an example of what you should be doing uh, when it comes to your first aid. And there's other things that you can do. And this one item <clears throat> is, a surgical kit okay um, this here is actually I've got I've got a few of these this is a small one uh, it's compact enough to put in like a you know a bug out bag get home bag just you know whatever small little bag you can get more robust ones I've got a few others uh, this one has you know all the basic scalpels things like that uh, you can also get sutures um, which I thought I had them in here and I think I just Remembered, I've got them in an additional bag that goes in uh, the first aid kit. So um, it's something that you can you can purchase. You can stick them in here. Uh, you know, in this little this thing zips up nicely like this somehow. I'll figure it out eventually. And I just dropped something on my foot, so that will have to be uh, cleaned. These are not usually the quality of what they use in the hospital. Sometimes they are, sometimes they are. A lot of the, these are for like dissecting animals, you know, like a high school uh, science project. Some of them are, are designed for veterinarians. Um, the point is, and I'm not saying that you should all learn, become surgeons. The point of showing you this is there are, whoops, bump, pump the camera. There are things that you should probably have put away uh, that are more than just some bandages to patch up a wound. Uh, I understand before anyone starts popping fuses, you can't go out there and tell people to do surgical stuff. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Um, what I'm saying is, is that you should be able to learn or you should learn how to stitch things up. Uh, you can buy things on Amazon, little practice things to learn how to stitch a wound. Uh, if you if you raise animals, uh, there very possibly could come to a day that you need to use something like that. I've stitched up wounds on my livestock in the past, um, and you need to have that kind of stuff. There's other things you can get. There's uh, a, a lot of a lot of the equipment that would be used in emergency medicine. Uh, some of it you can purchase on your own. Not all of it, but some of it, uh, and some of it's maybe geared more towards veterinary medicine, uh, but it will work for humans. Again, I am not advising you to use this on people. What I'm saying is, is that what are you gonna do? What is your plan? If, you know, hospitals don't exist, ERs, you can't get to an ER and you have a problem. Even if you don't know how to use it, uh, there may be someone around you that does. And it doesn't hurt to purchase a few of these. Like I said, these here, this little kit here, I think it was like 15 bucks or something like that. Uh, I have a few of them and I, I just, I, I bought them quite a while back. 
a few years back and they're just they're good to just have sitting around because you just never know and it doesn't you don't have to use these to, to do an open heart surgery uh, you may have to remove a, a something a, a splinter or something that's embedded in someone's skin and having you know tools like that would be better than whipping out your you know trusty rusty pocket knife um, so I would advise looking at your first aid kits and trying to figure out if if they need to be just a little bit more robust than just bandaging up boo-boos uh, so that you can get someone to the hospital. And if certainly try to find the tr you know right type of medical manuals. Uh, I've, I've been a big advocate of going to places like thrift stores to find you know old nursing and paramedic and EMT um, books that they would use in, in school. And you can find those a lot of times dirt cheap uh, you know, at thrift stores and stuff. All right. So we have all the stuff that's going on and I'm telling you this, the stuff in Afghanistan, it's, it's sad. It really is. It's sad. I, you know, yes, we needed to be out of there. Uh, we, we, we needed to do it right though. And how we're doing it is awful. There's, um, very possibly thousands of Americans. Uh, they're saying a couple of hundred now, uh, but they're also saying that they only evac around five or six thousand Americans in the beginning They said that there was at least ten maybe fifteen thousand Americans in country So if they've only taken out six or so that means there's a lot more that's still left uh, There are congressmen uh, speaking out, you know saying hey, they're just lying to you folks. They're lying to us it, You know the stuff that they're saying isn't true and and, and there's just there's a lot of stuff and it's it, it's looking pretty bad here on the home front though um, things just continue to kind of, you know, spiral out of control. We had last week the Supreme Court, which all of us knew they would, uh, shot down the rent moratorium extension, uh, saying that only Congress can do this, that the president and the CDC can't, which we also do. Even the president admitted that, um, that they can't do that. And so the rent moratorium is, is dead. And it doesn't look like uh, that Congress has any intention of, of re-upping it. And so probably already people are starting to get eviction notices. Uh, I'm sure court houses across the country are starting to get busy with uh, evictions. I understand, you know, no one wants to see millions of Americans on the streets. Uh, it, it, the last numbers that I saw were anywhere between 11 and 15 million homes uh, could be, you know, on the chopping block, block for evictions, but there's another side to this coin. The other side is that the vast, vast majority of landlords are just regular people, just like you and I. In fact, some of them are, are watch this channel and they tell me, uh, you know, they may only have like two properties and they're not making any money off of them. They still have to do maintenance. They still have to pay the taxes on them. Uh, and and, they're, and it's, it's, they're, they're struggling, they themselves, because it's either sometimes it's all their income, some, most of the time it's just part of their income and it's, it's a struggle. And a lot of times these landlords, um, they don't own the properties free, you know, free and clear. They still pay a mortgage on them. And so they're paying a mortgage on a property and no one's paying the rent on it. And so it's becoming difficult. There's even stories I've seen that, that the landlords or the tenants are living in the house or the apartment or whatever, free and clear, not paying their rent. And the landlords are homeless because they, they can't afford, you know, they can't afford to pay their own bills. So they're homeless while the tenant uh, is living in the home. This is gonna come to a head. I've said this before. You cannot, I mean, what, what, what person can sit back and say, yeah, for, for a year and a half, all these millions and millions of homes in America just aren't paying any kind of rent. It's to the tune of around 19 to 20 billion dollars a month, a month, 20 billion a month in rent that's not being paid in, in this country. That, that's a big chunk of change. I mean, that's, that's got to be affecting the, in the market, the economy as a whole, that 20 billion dollars a month is, is not being put towards, uh, you know, these mortgages that are to the, to the landlords, which usually in turn is paying mortgages. And then on top of that, this um, unemployment extension or whatever it is, I have no, I never got any of it, but, cause, uh, but anyways, I guess it's gonna end. It looks like it's gonna end next week. Um, I've seen reports that some of these people 
on unemployment, sitting at home, are making up to $35 an hour. $35 an hour. It's like that we're talking about in the numbers of seven and a half million people are being cut off as of next week. So, I know, long video to get to the point. We have 11 to 15 million people that are facing eviction. We have seven and a half plus million people uh, that are being cut off in unemployment. Do you guys think that that could be a problem? I mean, you know, the easy answer is, is they just need to go out and get a job and, and it'll take care of everything. I know that's the easy answer, but I don't think it's gonna work quite that way. Um, that, there's some of these people won't work. Some of these people can't find the right kind of job. Some of these people, you know, the job that they find may not be the one that they need. Companies all over are struggling. And yes, some of them struggling because of, of workers. You know, I'm hearing that all the time. Uh, I talked to a business owner here locally. They own a con little mom and pop convenience store and they're having a problem getting supplies, you know, the trucks. And there's, they said there's times that the trucks just don't show up. They don't get a truck that week for a particular, you know, whether it's soda, the milk truck or what a bread truck or whatever it is. And she said, usually we are, we are told that they don't have any employees that day, that they don't have enough employees to load the truck or they don't have enough employees to drive the trucks. And she said, we just don't get it. So yes, there is that. There's definitely seems to be jobs out there, but I just don't think that all those people that's been sitting for 18 months, drawing all this money is just gonna immediately jump up and say, okay, you know, fun time's over, let's go back to work. Um, I think we're see, we're, we, are, we are witnessing the beginning of a, of a problem. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff, you know, this hurricane down there, we, we don't even know the, the full damages of the hurricane. There's certainly been lives lost, there's been buildings damaged, but here's something, I don't know how many people know this because the news isn't really talking about it much. 95% or actually just slightly over 95% of all the oil rigs in the, in the coast or in the, the, you know, the Gulf uh, were shut down because of this thing. They shut down pipelines and oil rigs and refineries and all that kind of stuff because this hurricane was so big and so powerful and it basically cut right through where everything was at um all that kind of you know the oil industry they shut it all down or at least they shut a lot of it down and there is reports that it could take anywhere from weeks to a month or maybe even more to get everything back up and going because as we learned if you remember back during the big snowstorm this year uh, down in texas and the cold weather you don't just shut those refineries and stuff down it's not like a light switch folks you don't go in and flip the light off and then you know the next day flip it back on and everything goes back to normal it doesn't work that way it takes some time um, how much is that going to affect the economy having 95 percent uh, of the you know rigs and refineries down there in the coast shut down or at least in that the path of that hurricane um, there's there's just a lot of stuff going on I'm hearing more and more and more from people about the the uh, you know supply chain and little stories from people of how it's it's broken down in their area what they're struggling with in their area and then this whole health crisis there's definitely more going on uh, people are truly getting sick I have personal friends and family that have gotten sick that's gotten very ill um, I, I have some some ex, you know personal experiences I'm not going to go into detail on here of people that have died and there's no real reason to explain why they died okay uh, they, they shouldn't have but they did and I've known people that's almost died uh, and it still live with some serious complications uh, because of this and probably will the rest of their life um, you know, no people that are on ventilators and no people that, uh, so it, the point is, is it, it is getting worse. There's something out there for certain. And it's not just the people that don't have this. In fact, most of the people, in fact, I think just about everyone that I know that have, has gotten seriously ill and the couple of people that did die did in fact have this. I received an email uh, from a viewer down in New Zealand and, you know, I won't go on to, cause it was a link, the email. Um, but in the email, the person was saying, it's bad down here. They're shutting everything down. You know, New Zealand is like following right behind Australia. And because they're close enough to Australia, they're probably hearing a lot more uh, information than you and I are. And the, the person said, please 
just tell your listeners there in the US to warn them, to wake them up. Because if it's coming, you know, it's, it's already down there. It's already whatever, for whatever reason, Australia and New Zealand, uh, you know, New, Australia is certainly worse, but New Zealand's been getting hit pretty hard with the, you know, regulations and lockdowns and all that kind of stuff. And they were saying, please just wake your listeners up, tell them, you know, that it's bad and it's coming. And don't think that just because they live in America that, that they're insulated and shel sheltered and shielded from all this. It's coming up here too. So when you add in all this stuff, supply chains and, you know, the, the health crisis and the, the, the restrictions and lockdowns from it, and then you, then you add to that, you know, we've got people that are being evicted from their homes by the millions. We have people that are, you know, being cut off from the government, you know, checks by the millions. Um, you know, we live in a, in, a, in a country now that has no respect around the world because of what our government's been doing, that we're being laughed at all over the world. Uh, our leadership, there's no respect for our leadership. I think things are going to keep getting worse. I say this all the time. I feel like a broken record, but uh, folks, I, I believe it's true. And you need to you need to get prepared, uh, you know, as you're stocking up on stuff for those of you that have stuck around almost 20 minutes on this video. Um, check out uh, preparewithtravis.com. Some great deals on emergency freeze dried food, probably some of the best value uh, for your you know dollar for calorie that you can find online. Uh, preparewithtravis.com. Some really great products from um, my Patriot Supply. Almost forgot their name. <laughs> Um, but folks, seriously, get your homes prepared. Get yourselves prepared mentally, physically, and spiritually. Uh, there is just no possible way a nation can endure the, am the amount of things that we are seeing happen and walk away unscathed. Uh, it, it, the, it, the, this house of cards is collapsing, and we need to get prepared for it. All right, folks, thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video.